Hi! In this demo, I'll show you how a retailer can use Microsoft Azure to manage their apps and infrastructure at the edge using Azure Arc, Azure Kubernetes Service, and Azure Stack HCI. I need to warn you, this is a meaty, lengthy, end-to-end -end demo. We're going to deploy Kubernetes, set up GitOps, deploy some VMs, use Azure Monitor, and drill into a hardware failure, all without leaving the Azure portal. I hope you'll stick around, because this is a fun one. Let's start with the backstory. For this demo, we'll use the example of Fourth Coffee, a fictional retail coffee house chain. Today, they're expanding by opening four new locations in the Seattle area, as well as a local roastery and warehouse. Fourth Coffee is a cloud-first company. They run their website, their accounting and HR systems, their email marketing campaigns, all in the Microsoft Azure cloud. But to operate their brick and mortar cafes, they do have a couple of software applications that need to run in every cafe. Let's focus on two of them. The first and most important is their point of sale system, which they call ForSale. ForSale is developed and maintained in-house by Fourth Coffee's developers so that they can quickly roll out new offers like mobile ordering, a loyalty program, and so on. The app is written in Python using Flask and packaged as a Linux container image, which they deploy and manage through Kubernetes. The second software application is their physical access control and security solution called OnSec, which they get off the shelf from a vendor. OnSec is required at every physical premises where Fourth Coffee operates. It controls badge readers and door locks, keeping front of house and back of house separate, and it records and retains video from security cameras. The app is packaged as two virtual machines running Windows, one for the Access Database and one for the Network Video Recorder. Both the Point of Sale app and the Security app are essential to Fourth Coffee's ability to operate their cafes throughout the day. If the internet goes down or a piece of hardware fails, they need to be able to unlock the door and sell coffee. So, each location needs local and resilient compute and storage. Since they already use Microsoft Azure, Fourth Coffee is standardizing on edge infrastructure from Azure too. In each location, they've deployed two small bare metal servers running Azure Stack HCI and the Azure Kubernetes Service Hybrid, all connected through Azure Arc. Let's take a look. Here we are in the Azure portal, logged into Fourth Coffee's subscription. From here, an administrator can see all the resources that Fourth Coffee has in the cloud, their website, some virtual machines, their Azure Virtual Desktop Session Host pool, and so on. With Azure Arc, they can also use the Azure portal to see the resources that Fourth Coffee has deployed at the edge. Here, we can see all their Arc-enabled infrastructure and workloads conveniently in one place. For example, those five Arc-enabled Azure Stack HCI clusters, one in the roastery and one in each of the cafes. We can select the cluster to see more details. Fourth Coffee uses tags to organize resources by things like cafe number, location, and name. We can see the bare metal servers that comprise this cluster, with details like cores and memory. And we can directly see the resources hosted on this cluster, like virtual machines. This cluster isn't hosting any virtualized workloads yet. And for that matter, it isn't hosting any Kubernetes workloads yet either. Back in Azure Arc, we can see Fourth Coffee's Kubernetes infrastructure. Each of the five locations has the AKS control plane, but that's it, nothing else. So the situation is, the bare metal servers have been received, set up, and connected to the cloud, but Fourth Coffee hasn't deployed any of their apps yet. The good news is that they can easily do that, right now and right from here in the Azure portal. Okay, let's do it. Let's get our cafes ready for business. We first need to deploy the point of sale app, which is Kubernetes based. For that, we'll need an AKS cluster. So let's add an AKS hybrid cluster. Choose our subscription, a resource group, and give the cluster a name. We'll start with the Belltown Cafe, and be sure to select the custom location that represents Belltown. Generate a new key pair in case we need access for troubleshooting, and click Next. The ForSale app is Linux-based, so we want our Kubernetes worker node pool to run Linux. And we'll select that we want three nodes. Lastly, we need to choose how we'll access this cluster. Now check this out. We can use local accounts, but we can also natively use Azure Active Directory to authenticate. This is a great option for Fourth Coffee because they already have all their users and groups defined in AAD. We'll select an existing group. In this case, we just have the one. And then leave networking as default, and we're ready to click Create. This deployment will take a few minutes, so while it's running, let's review what just happened. From the Azure portal, we initiated an AKS hybrid cluster deployment to our cafe in Belltown. The command flowed from Azure Arc, 
down to the Arc Resource Bridge at the edge, which is now instructing the Azure Kubernetes service to provision a set of Linux virtual machines, inside which it'll provision everything we need for Kubernetes, the core components, storage and networking providers, everything. There are a few remarkable things to note here. First, this was really easy. Even though we deployed to an edge location, it was the same push-button experience as we'd expect from managed Kubernetes in the cloud. Second, our app is Linux-based, and it's getting first-class treatment because the AKS service includes a Linux container host image that's fully maintained, secured, and supported by Microsoft. And third, the native integration with Azure Active Directory means we can leverage our existing identity system, and we don't need to spin up something separate just for Kubernetes. Back in the Azure portal, our Arc-enabled Kubernetes cluster has been deployed. If we select it, we see that right here in the portal, we can manage this cluster and all its Kubernetes resources, including deployments, pods, and more. The next step is to deploy our app to this cluster. We could certainly do that manually as a one-off, but the thing is, we know that the ForSale team is constantly innovating and improving their app. So instead, we'll set up continuous delivery with GitOps. This way, we can always deploy the latest whenever there's a new version of the app. In the left nav, we'll select GitOps, and then create a GitOps configuration powered by Flux v2. We'll give the configuration a name, and give the namespace for our app. Next, we'll point to the GitHub repository where the ForSale team has their code. For this demo, it's a public repository. And we'll set the sync interval. The last step is to specify which path within our GitHub repository contains the YAML file for our application. This is where Flux will periodically look for changes to reconcile against our cluster. With that, we can review and create. Two things are going to happen now. The first is that the Flux operator is installed on our Kubernetes cluster as an extension. We can see this by looking under Extensions. The second is that Flux will begin making sure that the latest version of our app is deployed on our cluster. In other words, that our cluster is compliant with the YAML on GitHub. And just like that, we're done. For sale is deployed. Let's check it out. From a device inside the cafe, we can pull up a browser and navigate to the point of sale interface. Ta-da! Our baristas are all set to start selling coffees and teas and more. Speaking of more, Let's switch personas for a moment and talk about the For Sale dev team. It's almost the holidays, and they've been planning a little design refresh to accompany the launch of some new menu items. With continuous delivery, they're empowered as the app owners to deploy the new version of this app whenever they're ready. They don't need the infrastructure team to be involved at all. On GitHub, here's the source code for the For Sale application. Again, it's a Flask app, so it's written in Python. Personally, I feel ready for the holidays. So in app.py, I'm going to update the variable holiday season from false to true. I'll add a commit message, and in the spirit of spreading holiday cheer, I'll commit my changes directly to main. <laughs> Obviously, this is a demo. Uh, in real life, don't do this. Behind the scenes, we've set up an Azure DevOps build pipeline that will detect this source code change, build it into a new container image, and then publish that container image to Fourth Coffee's Azure Container Registry. Back in the Azure portal, we can watch as our GitOps configuration springs into action. It detects that there's a new latest, deploys the new pods, and terminates the old ones, all without an infrastructure engineer doing anything. And just like that, we can refresh the page and see the redesign live in production. <laughs> maybe it's cheerful, maybe it's cringy, but certainly it's empowering for the for sale team. Let's unpack what's exciting about this. With GitOps, app owners can focus on their app, not the infrastructure. They can redeploy code as fast or frequently as they want, with no burdensome changes to the Kubernetes or virtualization layer. Second, the GitOps implementation that we showed doesn't rely on any proprietary voodoo. It uses GitHub for version control, the Flux operator for reconciling changes, and other tools that are standard in the Kubernetes community. And because AKS is available both in the cloud and hybrid, Fourth Coffee could easily use this GitOps workflow to develop and test the For Sale app with AKS in the cloud before deploying to AKS Hybrid in the cafe. All right, it's time to move on to our second workload. Fourth Coffee relies on two products from the fictional OnSec suite of security software, OnSec Access and OnSec Network Video Recorder. 
Unlike For Sale, because Fourth Coffee purchases OnSec from a vendor, they don't have complete control over how it's packaged. And unfortunately, the packaging requirements from the vendor are pretty specific. OnSec Access is distributed as a Windows installer that supports the latest versions of Windows Server, whereas OnSec NVR is distributed as a physical, or in this case, virtual appliance that runs Windows Server 2016 inside and requires a minimum of 16 gigs of memory and a minimum of three 500 gig data disks for storing video. Luckily, with Azure Stack HCI, this is going to be pretty easy to accommodate. Let's start with the Azure Portal way. The quickest way to create the generic Windows VM that we need for OnSec access is simply to get it from the Azure Marketplace. On the cluster for Belltown, we'll go to VM Images, add a VM image, and choose the option for Azure Marketplace. Give the image a name, and then select the image we want. Let's choose Windows Server 2022 Azure Edition, which is the latest fully patched and trusted image directly from Microsoft, and click Create. Behind the scenes, Azure Arc is basically downloading the image file from the cloud into our cafe. The image is compressed so that it's only a few gigabytes. It takes a couple of minutes. Once it's done, we're ready to create an instance of this VM so that we can install the OnSec Access app. Under Virtual Machines, let's create a virtual machine. Choose our subscription and resource group, give the VM a name, and then select the marketplace image that we downloaded. Provide the administrator username and password, and click Next. For this app, we don't need any additional data disks, and we just need one basic network adapter connected to our default network. With that, we can go ahead and click Create. Behind the scenes, our command is flowing from Azure Arc down through the Arc resource bridge in our Belltown Cafe to the Azure Stack HCI hypervisor, which is creating one new Windows VM by copying the already downloaded marketplace image and then attaching a new network interface to the virtual network that we defined. And by the way, the image itself only needs to be downloaded once, and we could use it over and over to create as many VMs as we need. Once it's provisioned, we can click the handy Go to Resource button to see our new VM. You'll notice that it looks a lot like an Azure VM with a wealth of management options available right here in the Azure portal. To install our app, the one we want is extensions. Because they deploy the security app over and over in every new location, the fourth coffee team has written a custom script to automate the installer. To run that script, we can go to add custom script and select our script file, install access.ps1 from the Azure blob where we store it and then run it. Once the script is run, OnSec Access will be up and running, so we can turn our focus to the OnSec Network Video Recorder. This one is a bit trickier, because the vendor OnSec gave us a VHD file, so we can't just use an Azure Marketplace image. Instead, we'll need to create a custom VM image from that file, which we've stored in an Azure storage account. Note that we could also use an on-prem file share if that was easier. We'll give the image a name, and then browse to the location in Azure where it's stored. Here it is, the VHD file from OnSec containing exactly the OS version that they support. We'll select it and create. Thinking ahead, once this image is downloaded, we're gonna need to create a VM that meets OnSec's requirements for memory and storage. So, okay, let's do that. From our cluster, go to Virtual Machines and Create VM. Specify Subscription, Resource Group, and give it a name. The custom location is all pre-filled, and we can now choose between two VM images, so let's be sure to select the right one. Give it the required memory, which is 16 gigs, and give it an administrator username and password. Now the Network Video Recorder app, as its name implies, stores video, so it needs a lot of storage. In the disks step, we'll need to attach three 500 gig data disks, and that's in addition to the boot VHD. For each disk, we'll just provide a name, like disk 1, 2, 3, and the size, like 500 gigs. The Azure portal makes it easy to do all of this as part of the initial VM creation. It is a bit repetitive, but more on that in a minute. Lastly, we'll add a network interface, give it a name, attach it to the default network, and we're ready to review and create. As always, this deployment will, of course, take a few minutes, but once it's done, we can go to our resource and see the VM. 
complete with its 16 gigs of RAM and its three data disks. In fact, we can see the disks individually here, and we can even add another one if we needed to right here from the portal. With that, we're done deploying both parts of the OnSec application into our cafe in Belltown. To review, this was possible because Azure Arc and Azure Stack HCI provide complete and flexible VM management. There's support for both Azure Marketplace images and custom VM images. With VM extensions like Custom Script, Fourth Coffee can automate deploying their virtualized applications. And they have total flexibility to configure the VMs with the amount of vCPUs, memory, and storage that they need to meet their app's requirements and effectively utilize their physical resources. Okay, so we've deployed our container-based app and we've deployed our VM-based app. This is all great. But as we can see here in Azure Arc, if we take a look at, say, our VMs, we've only done one location, the Belltown Cafe. We have yet to deploy any of this to the other locations. Are we really going to repeat all these steps for each location? This is where the real power of Azure comes in. Because everything we've done so far has been modeled as Azure resources in the Azure control plane, we can templatize and automate all of it using an Azure Resource Manager, or ARM, template. Back in GitHub, Fourth Coffee has drafted an ARM template to do just that. This JSON file fully defines the VMs we just created, right down to the tedious details that we called out earlier, like naming the data disks and sizing them each 500 gigs. We could invoke this template with one line of Azure CLI, or back in the Azure portal, we can go to deploy a custom template and do it from here. In the editor, we'll paste our template and check this out. We can even use this handy resource visualizer to confirm that our template is going to do what we expect. Deploy the network video recorder VM with one, two, three data disks and a VNIC, and deploy the OnSec access VM with just the VNIC. Looks good. So we'll just provide any site specific parameters and then run the template. Once we run it against each location, back in Azure Arc, we can see that everything has been deployed to every cafe. Here are the two VMs times four cafes that we need for the OnSec app. And using another template, we deployed the Kubernetes-based ForSale app to each cafe as well. Here are those Kubernetes clusters running. Fourth Coffee is really making technology work for them here. Think about it. Next time they have changes to their in-house app, those changes will roll out on their own through GitOps. If they ever change which VM-based apps they're using, they can roll that out using an ARM template like we just showed. And for each new cafe that they open, yeah, you guessed it, they can just reuse these ARM templates. But this is just the beginning. So far, we focused on provisioning. There's one more thing before we end this demo. Fourth Coffee has experience using Microsoft Azure to manage their resources in the cloud. They rely on services like Azure Monitor, Microsoft Defender for Cloud, and Azure Update Management. With Azure Arc, they can manage their resources at the edge using those same services. For example, let's go to Azure Monitor. Here, Fourth Coffee can see alerts, metrics, logs, and insights from all their resources all in one place. And that includes their edge infrastructure. For example, under Container Insights, the Kubernetes clusters that we deployed earlier for ForSale show up with rich monitoring data like interactive graphs of resource utilization, uptime and performance of individual containers, and more. They can also see the physical infrastructure. Each Azure Stack HCI cluster shows up in Azure Monitor too. This gives Fourth Coffee a bottoms-up infrastructural view of servers, VMs, and things like the underlying storage volumes without the need for something separate outside of the Azure portal. On the Health Summary page, we notice that our Belltown Cafe has a warning. It looks like there's something wrong with a physical disk. We can click to get more detail and see the alert. Yep, it looks like we need to either reconnect or replace one of the disks in one of the servers. Now, normally, this is where you would need to go into some other management tool to figure out exactly what part to replace and how to do it. But because Fourth Coffee is using edge infrastructure from Azure, they can drill down all the way to the hardware right here in the Azure portal. In the Hardware Manager, we can select the server, select the disk with the warning, and see exactly which part in which location is having a problem. This top-to-bottom visibility through the entire solution, from the application down to the metal, is only possible because Fourth Coffee chose Azure for their in-cafe infrastructure with Azure Kubernetes Service, Azure Stack HCI, 
and in this case, the Pro 2 hardware. To recap what we've seen, in this demo, Fourth Coffee used Microsoft Azure's hybrid services to extend the power of the cloud into their brick and mortar cafes. They deployed a Linux container based application and a Windows VM based application to every new cafe with just a few easy steps in the Azure portal. They empowered their in house dev team to innovate faster with GitOps, and they empowered their infrastructure team with top to bottom visibility and management through a single pane of glass. You can learn more about all the technologies showcased in this demo at azure.com/hybrid. Thank you for watching.